Duolingo and Babbel are out. If you're an intermediate speaker, you need to be using something more suited to your needs. So stick around for my recommendations. Language learning apps are a great little bit of fun practice if you're a beginner, but if you're an intermediate or advanced speaker, they are not gonna cut the mustard for you to see the improvements that you want. I'm gonna recommend three of my favorite tools for getting comprehensible input, and next week I'm gonna deal with getting output using apps, and I'm also gonna include a free bonus tool if you stick around to the end of the video. For those of you who don't know me, I'm William Cook, and I help intermediate and advanced English speakers transform their communications and become great leaders. If that sounds like you, subscribe for some more. My favorite apps all support my method of learning, which involves getting loads and loads of comprehensible input and loads and loads of output. Today, we're gonna to deal with three apps that are gonna help you get all the comprehensible input that you could ever need. My number one favorite app, we're on it right now. It's YouTube. YouTube is one of the biggest search engines in the world, and it's absolutely packed with content, free content in hundreds of languages, and if you're learning English, then you're even luckier because the majority of the content is in English, uh, that you can use audio and video content that you can use to get comprehensible input in any topic in a fun, interesting, educational, informative, um, current affairs way, whatever you like, it's all available on YouTube. You can follow all of your favorite sources, hint, hint, uh, but it also has some really, really useful built-in tools. Some of these tools are actually things you would expect to see in online language learning apps, which I think is really interesting because they're available to free for you. One of them is the fact that most things have subtitles. Uh, some of them are automatically generated. These are generally fairly good, uh, but lots of people take the time to upload proper subtitles in several languages. Even though if you're an intermediate speaker, you should only be looking at subtitles in your target language. Having these subtitles is really useful because it allows you to do lots of different active listening exercises, dictations, and actually check that you were correct. YouTube also has the feature that you can slow down the audio, which is another thing you'd expect to see more in <laughs> professional language learning apps available for free. And it doesn't cause too much distortion if you choose to slow down the video to 75%, for example giving you an easier way to understand if you get to something particularly difficult. If you want to find out more about how to use YouTube for learning, uh, check the description box because I've got a fantastic link there for you. For my number two app, I actually have a couple of recommendations and I'm going to talk about one of them in depth. But generally, it's something called a news aggregator app. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's an app that collects news and articles from different sources. There are many, many of these online. One of my favorites is Feedly because it actively finds good things for you and has many different feeds as the name implies. But I'm gonna talk more in depth today about Google News because it's a more beginner friendly free alternative that's available on all platforms. Google News lets you sign up to different sources, themes, uh, publications, and collects news input from all of these different sources and gives it to you in one list, which is really, really useful if you wanna get comprehensible reading input, especially if you wanna create the habit over your morning coffee to be doing that, because we all know that these small habits snowball into massive change. Feedly is another one that I personally use. Uh, it has a few more settings and options. It's a bit more complicated, but both are really, really good. So with those two apps, YouTube and Google News, you have all of the input your heart could ever desire. But it sounds like it might be quite tricky to organize. My third favorite app, and probably actually my favorite app of all, uh, not even just for language learning, is Notion. Notion lets you organize everything. I organize my entire business in Notion. I, I organize my personal life in Notion. I organize my writing. I organize my content. I organize everything in Notion. Once you set up Notion, it's like having your own personal interactive Wikipedia. And for language learning, you can build things like vocabulary lists, Kanban boards, calendars, all kinds of stuff. You can even collect articles and annotate them so you know exactly what you're doing. It's so, so useful with all of its templates and different functionality. Now, I'm actually planning on creating a video about Notion, specifically a full-length tutorial on Notion, uh, which is gonna be out in the next couple of weeks uh, and will include a free language learning template to get you started. 
If that's something you're interested in, subscribe, hit the notification bell, it will be with you shortly. So these are three of my favorite tools for getting comprehensible input and starting to create a great language learning habit. But I promised that there would be an extra bonus tool. Now this is just an online uh, free tool that I found by accident uh, a couple of weeks ago actually. Uh, it's called WordLink by C. Lil Store, and it's funded by the Erasmus Plus program in the EU that some of you might know. And it's a really interesting, useful little tool uh, where you can take the URL of a website, uh, drop it into the box and connect it with a dictionary. So immediately when you click on something, it will give you a dictionary definition of that. And you can use it to translate individual words and, and things like that. Uh, it's really, really good, especially in the lower intermediate stages, if you're trying to get reading input and you want to do that quite quickly without being interrupted by switching to a different dictionary app. Uh, it's fantastic for doing this kind of speed reading almost, uh, where we might just have to check something for comprehension. So that's it for my three favorite tools and my bonus tool. Uh, if you found this useful, please like the video, subscribe, but definitely check out the description box because there are links to all of the apps, some other learning resources, including a link to our community. And also I've included some of the idioms I've used in here that you may or may not know. Thank you very much for watching and see you again soon.